G'day, this is a clip to accompany your first uh, foray into Xero. Um, you'll, you'll have a uh, 18 pages of this activity complete with instructions in front of you, but this is designed to help you fill in the gaps. So this is the um, sheet that you've got and I'm just going to go through uh, in this video to to fill in a few gaps. So here we go. So um, when you guys have, have registered and logged in or about to log in um, we go along here you'll need to do another authentication method I usually go um, there and you need to go to an alternative email address uh, mine's gone to Gmail so I'll stop here and come back to you Okay, here's my verification code for my Gmail account. Um, I log in. I must admit it's a little bit uh, annoying every time you log in you have to do that. But once you get in, you get to here, you'll see that I've all already been uh, at work. Uh, what I'm going to do, and this is what you'll have to do, you have to go to here and add a new organisation. Um, what will you call your organisation? It's uh, an exercise from the Clifton uh, Beach Surf Club so type that in, it doesn't really matter uh, you've got to call it something uh, I usually put here, I type in education um, it then comes up with I usually put accounting education um, you don't have to do this uh, and then quickly, uh, simply go to start the trial and does a few things. Um, you then have to set up your um, the first thing you have to do you have to set up your uh, bank account um, but in the instructions I um, uh, talked to you guys about um, becoming an advisor um, so what you need to do you need to go to here um, and click on settings go to users click on you the user and down here you want to become an advisor advisor is uh, enables you to put in um, manual journals as they call it but they're actual general journal entries which you may need to make later so once you've done that you update your permissions um, then go back to the da dashboard I'm just going through the instructions to make sure that um, I haven't missed anything so I've done the advisor bit. Now I'm ready to, to set up my bank account, which is important. So bank balances, add account. Now this is all fictitious. So I, the important thing here, though, is to put a cash at bank. That's what we call our cash at bank account. That's what I've called it. Um, oops. Um, I usually go to the ANZ bank. I beg your pardon. It doesn't really matter what bank you have. And this is where I type in cash at bank. Um, and without a typo be good um, everyday account I put in a number of fictitious uh, you need to put six numbers in here and then usually about eight or so there uh, it doesn't matter really what, what they are because you're not going to link them to a bank account anyway and this is what this um, uh, software can do um, so I've got my cash account, cash account set up. So the next thing I need to do is to establish a series of accounts. Um, if I click on um, accounting and chart of accounts, I go to it, and you can see that uh, a number of accounts have already been set up. All right. So. Uh, we can change some of those if we want or edit one, one account for example uh, um, I know that uh, I'll be using interest or other revenue um, if I press on that I can just change what that amount what that type of account is called uh, it's called services revenue so um, I've got that set up there like that or indeed if I wanted to put in a new account um, say for argument's sake I wanted to put in a new assets account um, um, I might want to put in another uh, fixed asset for example I might have a, a car 
so you've got to be careful in writing to your codes and that's your chart of account code that um, the new you, you got to have a discrete number so I might pick 730 as my new uh, account that I may need so account type you got to put in there it's a fixed asset uh, that's something that's physical okay the code 730 a description um, is car and so on and so forth the GST is important but if I'm going to buy it obviously I'm going to have to pay GST on it I save it all right and down here you'll see that under the asset section I've got a car and if you want to add out any other accounts that's the process that you go through okay so I've covered that so you'll come to task 2 uh, you'll be asked to record a lot of um, transactions and this is the beauty of this program you really only have to know how to enter transactions in various modules and then a um, whole lot of things become um, easy for you in terms of uh, all the journals are done, ledgers are done, um, the trial balance is done um, and then you can d generate um, income statements and, prof and balance sheets. So uh, this is the beauty of this program. So I'm looking at page 11 where um, some of the transactions are and you'll have to obviously put those in um, and what I've done is to just highlight the different types. So the first one I'm going to look at is um, receiving money and that's when we receive money uh, for um, for starting the business it's owner contributing cash so um, the way that you do it is go to the plus sign whenever you want to do a transaction go to the plus sign and and funnily enough there's this thing called here receive money we've received five thousand dollars that's a it's amount that the owner puts in um, to the bank account to get it started so obviously we've got to choose a bank account in our business there's only one and other businesses there might be more than that uh, so it, it's from the owner um, can be a new contact if you like the reference <coughs> could be receipt number one um, I'm not going to bother with that uh, I'm going to put here owner introduced uh, capital so that's re really like innovation and the way that this is set up that um, you may have more than one but mostly it's just one it was for five thousand um, dollars you can see that straight away it sets it up for you here but the count well, I've got to work out what account it is now uh, it relates to uh, it's, a, it's a nine account oh, where, 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 where is it oh there it is owner a share capital so it's owner's equity that you've got to put in there um, in terms of the tax rate there's no tax rate in there and that's business activity statement that just means there's no tax on this so I save that so I've done uh, receiving money um, and the other one I'm going to show you straight away is to spend money um, you can see here that I've got five thousand dollars in the uh, bank account um, there it is there balance and zero is five thousand uh, dollars I'm now going to pay or um, spend money so this is a uh, when I um, have a check account and want to uh, use a check or in the modern term um, transfer some money out of your bank to somebody else so again you've got to choose your bank account in this instance um, I'm buying some insurance from Amy so that can go in there you can include it as a new contact if you like the reference uh, in this case it could be a check number um, I'm not going to put that in um, the, the description is insurance um, it's one and it's um, uh, $1,200 but you've got to be careful now um, and I'll explain that in a minute in relation to the tax and I'll do it now so it, in, in the instructions it says plus GST so uh, in this case it's tax inclusive the amount is tax inclusive which means that the GST will be added on um, I've got to choose the account 
um, it knows that it's an expense account these were put in before insurance um, so once that's put in you can see here that it's added on the GST so you've got to be really careful about whether the amount that you have it says add GST or if it's inclusive if, if $1200 was the total amount that you had to pay then you'd pick inclusive and therefore uh, the amount that you charge to insurance accounts is, is, is less than that because you've got to take out the tax but in this instance they told you that it was exclusive so tax gets put on top so you've got to be careful about that once you're happy you press save so that is um, a cash um, transaction or both type of transactions I've done now in this exercise if you look on November the 3rd uh, you have bought a um, item and it's an item that is uh, you want to track and the reason why you want to track it is that you're selling lots of these things remember that you're a surfing business and we get about to buy some surfboards from Rip Curl Australia but before we do that we need to set up what we call an item now you go to business and go to products and services so you set up an item or product that you're selling uh, so in this instance we've got a new item um, I'm going to call this uh, Rip Curl uh, Surfboard um, and then you can write that in in, in full there if you like uh, I'm just doing that for demonstration purposes whoops it's not doing it for me Surfboard there we are um, I'm going to purchase this item but what amount do I pay for it when I purchase it so it says here 330 that's that's the amount that's given to you the purchase amount is usually um, relating to the cost of goods sold um, we do pay uh, GST on it therefore it's GST and expensive on expenses um, and how much do we sell this for and this is obviously changes from time to time but when we've put it in first you, you put in the, the current price as is given uh, the sales account in this case is sales and you can have different sorts of sales accounts of course if you're down here um, if there's a new account that's not there you just add it and like, like I showed you before GST and income you do charge GST and the important thing here is that you want to track this item all right um, and you're going to track this item so all the purchases go to the inventory account and when something gets sold we can then track the item and know how much we got in, in the, the inventory item at any one time and that's really good for trading um, businesses so once you've got that in uh, make sure that you track this item you put all this stuff in um, it's not working for me totally up here I don't know why they didn't go in but make sure that it's all there I'm just checking okay um, and you save that so what I've done all I've done is set up an item that we commonly sell in our business so in in that context on the 3rd of November we're going to purchase some so I go again if I do anything any new transaction go up here to the plus sign um, and when we purchase things we uh, create a thing called a bill it's like a purchase invoice right? Um, it's from Rip Curl Australia. Um, the due date, it, it, in a practical sense, it's usually um, 30 days. So all you have to do is type plus 30, see there, and it automatically comes up for you. It's quite smart. The item. Um, here he, we've only got one item. But in a normal business, you would have plenty more. But I've just set that up. So look at that. It just fits everything in for you beautifully the account uh, the tax rate and whatever else the only thing we have to be careful of here is that we actually bought four so you've got to type in four it automatically calculates it for you this is really good um, uh, make sure that uh, all these bits are right so it's tax inclusive I mean that was put in before and once you're happy all right, uh, you approve it so I'm just clicking through a few pages here so when you get to the proof stage um, you'll see that uh, this dialog box comes up now had we paid for it straight away or transferred the money straight away we could put the details down here 
okay it's the same date uh, paid from the cash at bank there might be a, a receipt number or something um, I'm just making that up as I go along but it, you know you might have a, a, a dedicated receipt number from your receipt book uh, you can put that in straight away and click add payment All right. now I'm not going to do that uh, just yet I'm just showing you that uh, if we have a cash purchase from a, a, a common supplier for an in, in, uh, inventory item we could do that straight away All right. now uh, that, that's explained the, the next section uh, and now what I'm going to do uh, I'm not going to add payment for, for now but I'm going to show you the other side of things and that is to when we have a cash or a um, credit service or a sale so um, I go up here and in this section if you want to if you sell anything you're going to generate an invoice right even if it's for cash now that invoice then becomes a receipt as you give it to your customer all right um, if it's a credit sale then the, the customer just takes the receipt now in this instance I'm imagining that I am selling uh, a, a surfboard uh, and but in this case I'm assuming that it's a, a cash sale so you can just have a cash sale like that that's fine uh, it's going to be on the same date um, and it automatically puts in the invoice number there for you if you wanted to change that uh, you could um, down here an inventory uh, in the item I've sold a surfboard uh, in this instance in, in the actual uh, context of, of your exercise on the 20th of November um, and just in a, while I think of it when when you do these exercises do them in order but don't worry about putting in the different dates because it'll really throw the program around because it's assuming that is done as of today so I'm not changing the date but on the 20th of November in your exercise um, we sold two surfboards All right, you can see everything down here is adjusted nicely it goes to the sales ac account um, if I wanted to I could actually change that price if I discounted it um, or it's a different price I can change that but I'm not going to it automatically goes to the sales account which is all sweet um, I approve this now if this was a credit sale I'd just leave it as it is okay um, but it's seeing it's a cash sale I put in the details here come on um, I've got to choose to cash a bank account I might have a reference receipt number two um, add payment right now what I'm going to do I'm not going to do that straight away I'm going to go back to my dashboard and show you if indeed that purchase had been made on credit and later on what you want to do uh, you, you want to pay it and the way that you do this is to um, go to the dashboard and you always come back to this you can see here invoices owed to me that was the one I just generated um, see how that comes up like that um, and there's a bill there too that's that I have to do in the future but that that one there says oh, this is weak uh, and normally if if you have a credit um, sale uh, it would be uh, the, it would be in the future but I, I, I put a different date into it but normally it'd be there so in either way you click on that and it comes back to this cash sale right uh, so if you click on the where it says blue and you'll notice you only saw this five seconds ago right? but that's how you access it from a credit uh, sale but this was actually cash sale so the dates today as I already showed you put cash in bank you can have the receipt number um, two whatever the case may be you add your payment right? so uh, when I go back to my dashboard you'll see that there's no uh, sales invoices owing um, if I wanted to pay this other invoice um, in the context of your actual assignment I'm not sure whether you have to pay um, I know it paid it straight away didn't it in terms of your um, the insurance I oh know this is oh, this is whip curl one I beg your pardon um, 
Oh yeah, on the 24th we paid Rip Curl for the full amount out, outstanding. So you click on that. Okay. Um, date paid, whatever that was. Paid from Cash at Bank. Um, this might be check number. I don't know if we had some before. You had the payment and away you go. Um, and then it would be um, paid off and be ready to go. Um, I'm not going to do that now, but at some stage throughout the exercise, you guys will need to do that. So I've gone back to my dashboard. Um, now, I'm assuming uh, that you have done, uh, that you've completed all of your um, exercises. Now, when you get to the end, uh, the beauty of, of this particular program is that uh, you, you can get a whole lot of reports and other bits and pieces out. Um, let's have a look at the balance sheet. Now my balance sheet is going to look very, very thin because I haven't done very much. I haven't put in the other transactions. But it's going to ask you uh, um, the... Um, oh, here we go. It's, it's, it's the wrong year. End of last financial year. Um, I'm going to do the last month. And as at the 29th, update it. All right, so you've got to be careful about um, the dates. All right, and you can see here I've got some cash in my bank. And don't worry too much about um, the current assets and other bits and pieces. You haven't been taught that yet. But essentially, your assets, your liabilities, giving you net assets, which equals to the amount that you've got in your owner's equity. So um, every time you do a transaction, if you wish, you can come up with a balance sheet. Uh, you can also come up with a profit and loss. Um, again, oh, here we go, it's, it's got the, the right uh, date here this time. Uh, I haven't sold very much here. Um, at the moment, uh, you can see here my net profit is minus. It's not complete, but you can see here I've got my trading income, my cost of sales, uh, my other expenses. I only put insurance, but there's others that you have to put in. I've got a net loss, and that in those brackets is account speak for a loss. I, I can uh, save it as a PDF or export it to something. Um, the other important thing here, um, now since that you guys are human, um, you will probably uh, perhaps you could be making a mistake no, maybe not um, but if you wanted to find out what all your um, transactions are or what you made and I want you to guys have a look at this have a look at the journal report and you'll see all the transactions that I've done and, and you will have lots more but this is strictly in um, general journal format Right, so every transaction I put in, even if it's via those other modules and dialog boxes that you saw, um, here you have uh, everything given to you uh, in general journal format. Okay. Um, so this this is and annoyingly, it puts the last um, transaction last and the first one down here. So remember, the first one I put in was debit cash from when the owner introduced some money. There it is there. Um, and then we purchased uh, some insurance. Okay. Um, it doesn't use the convention that I've taught you in terms of having your assets, I beg your pardon, your debits first um, and your credit second. It doesn't indent them, but you can still see the debits and credits as they have occurred. All right. um, here we bought something from um, Rip Curl made some sales and so on and so forth. All right. So this is where you can you can um, check yourself. Oh yeah, um, when I have uh, made a sale, here it is. I sold something. There's a GST, and here you record your cost of goods sold. There it is to reduce my uh, inventory and re and record my cost of goods sold and so on and so forth. And up here I made um, a um, a, uh, I paid off this bill down here, that one there. Okay, 
that was my cash sale. Remember, I did it a bit later. But every transaction you make gets recorded as a general journal entry, and I want everybody to look at all of their transactions to make sure that you know, yep, it's right, it's right. And this is where your knowledge of of the basic bookkeeping would come in. Of course, if you put rubbish in, you get rubbish out. So you, this is a way of checking uh, that you've done everything correctly and ensuring that you don't have rubbish. Um, if if indeed you've made a mistake, right, February you've got to click on the amount. Remember that we sold some bits and pieces, and in this way you can then get back to uh, the transaction itself and the dialog box that we put in. It's just taking a bit of time to receive it, but um, here, uh, if that's a mistake, we can go to invoice. Um, and edit it and adjust that invoice or indeed we can get rid of it okay um, hopefully you guys won't have to uh, go there but um, that's a way of going back and checking and adjusting invoices and other transactions hopefully that's been useful to you um, this is just a guide and I dare say there's other bits and pieces that uh, you um, will find uh, that you need to know. This program is really cool in that if, if you uh, get to a certain dialog box, they've got these videos. So for argument's sake, you forgot or my description about um, doing a... Oh, hold on. Yeah, so you, you, quite often what you've got are these inbuilt videos how to do things. Zero is designed so you can quickly. Whoops. Um, so it, it helps you um, uh, here we go. So in the sales overview, you can watch these videos to help you go through it. Um, but, and, and, and if you get stuck, that's what you can do. Okay, I dare say I get lots more questions. This is just a guide to get you going into this new um, assignment. Now, uh, we will be doing more zero assignments throughout the year, so um, uh, that's why I've been fairly uh, comprehensive in A, the instructions, and B, in this video. Um, but uh, you'll be able to put your uh, skills to test in other assignments throughout the year, which counts towards um, Criterion 5, your ability to operate a accounting software. Okay, hope that's been useful to you.